Hey y'all, so before I get this video started, let me give a quick shout out. These were the first three comments in my last video. If you want to be featured in my next video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and come show me some love when I drop a new video. What's up you guys, it's Kian Bravon, AKA Coach Key coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. So as y'all can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be doing my first paycheck to paycheck budget for my January budget. As you guys know from the last video, I still do not have a planner just yet. So I did go ahead and just print out the couple of pages that I'm gonna need from the PDF file for my actual physical planner. Still don't have an update on the situation. I emailed them Sunday night. It's now Wednesday, I still don't have an answer. So I'll keep y'all updated, but even if they remedy the situation, this will probably be the last batch of planners that I order. And it's probably just gonna go digital from here. And I just, I just really don't know. I'll keep y'all updated. So <clears throat> I did get paid at midnight. And going back to the monthly paycheck to paycheck overview that I did in the last video, if you missed that, it'll be linked up in the eye in the sky. This is the week that we will be working off of. I budgeted that I would earn at least $1,300 and third, wait, $1,313, which I did. The only things I have coming out of this particular paycheck are half of my rent, my car insurance, and then the budgeted expenses. So let's first go here. So we will be able to start saving money with this paycheck. And I will show you guys um, how I'm gonna calculate that once we get down to the savings portion. So we have the dates. How do I do this? <laughs> Let's see. Y'all, I totally forgot. This is what happens when you only do these every two weeks now. How does this thing look? I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so we have January 13th through January 26th. I get paid every other Wednesday. And what my income was This is my income, $1,447.37. This was for, I believe, 56.25 hours in a two week time span. I do work um, PRN, so I work as many hours as I want to. And typically I do not work over 29 hours a week. Sometimes it ends up being less, it just kind of depends. So the first thing we have are the fixed expenses. Due date. I always include this in my description box, but if you are wondering, I am a PRN psych nurse and I work in a facility that's kind of low paying. Um, I choose to stay there because I'm okay with it. And I do live at home with my mother and sister, so I don't have a ton of housing expenses either. Okay, so rent, I'm gonna send the half of my rent off to my savings uh, today actually. And then I have car insurance. That is going to be sent on the 21st. I've had people ask me how mine is so low is because I'm on car insurance with my mom. And that just is a lot um, cheaper than if I'm on there by myself. And then we have unbudgeted because by myself, I'm th I think it's like double what I'm paying right now. So it's, I live with my mom, why not get on the insurance? So then we have unbudgeted just in case I forgot any fixed expenses. So the total we have $1,400. Plus 62.49, it's gonna give me 212.49. Then remaining, what I have is $1,234.88. 
Next, I'm gonna go into variable expenses. Luckily this month, I'm not projecting um, any variable expenses outside of the norm. But sometimes it'll be stuff like, oh, I'm traveling, so that's a variable expense that might come out of this paycheck, but not the next, because I'm traveling during this paycheck, things like that. But that's not coming up anytime soon. So all I have is the budget for my gas and groceries and stuff. No due date, because it's gonna go the whole two week time span. So we have 482.50. And then again, I just do unbudgeted, just in case. Total is gonna be the 482.50 remaining. is 752.38. Now let's get into the savings portion. Scoot up a little bit. And instead of due date, I just put date sent. Then we have amount again. Plus or minus. Okay, so this month I'm doing things a little bit different. Typically I save in my miscellaneous sinking fund, my car sinking fund in travel, but I'm gonna save in medical instead of travel because I don't plan on traveling anytime soon. And because I also know that I'm planning to establish a new doctor. So in that, I know that I'll have to get like, you know, that initial appointment and anything like that. I do want them to possibly do, I just realized this is an error. I do want them to do some lab work possibly just to see if there's anything in my blood that's indicative of any issues that might be because of me having COVID at some point. So I know that I'll have some medical expenses. So I want to start beefing up that account because I haven't put money in that account in quite some time, like probably over a year and a half, maybe even two years. So I'm going to go ahead and list the miscellaneous slash investment sinking fund. So I did tell you guys in December that I'm gonna be taking off all of February. And I told y'all that I wanted to save a certain amount of money in the month of December and January so that I can pay myself that amount that I saved, I would pay myself that in a salary for February. Um, so I thought I was gonna have to save money in January too, but I saved all of it in December. So thankfully I don't have to save any more for that at this time. So you guys will end up seeing that when I do the budget results next week, it'll be coming on Monday. All right, so we got 113 is when I'm gonna send that. All right, so to figure out the amount, So if you're new here, the way that I do my budget is, can be a little bit complicated, especially if you're not a numbers person. However, I did do a very simplified version of this on my channel last week. I'll make sure that's linked up in the eye in the sky. You'll end up coming up with the same exact thing. It's just, it'll look different. What was my expenses? I think it was nine, 65. All right, so my threshold or how much money I need to earn to pay, and that's not correct. That's the wrong one. The amount of money that I need to earn to cover my bills, which are my fixed expenses, is 604.14. Again, if you do the simplified version of this, it's okay, you're gonna end up with the same result at the end of the month. It's just, I don't do it that way. 
So my percentages for the month, which is basically how I'm splitting up my net income after I take out how much money needs to go to bills, everything that's left over is my net income and that has to be split between my checking account to pay for my everyday expenses and or variable expenses, gas, groceries, however you wanna categorize it. It also has to take care of what I'm sending to savings and if I was still in debt, which I am no longer, it would also be towards extra debt payments. Um, let's see. So the way that I have everything split right now is just 50, 50, literally all you can do after you pay your bills is split up your money between these three categories is literally nothing else. Okay. So my paycheck again was 14, what was it? 14, 47, 37. So I've, already earned enough money to pay for my fixed expenses. Now, does that mean I'm gonna pay my bills right now? No, <laughs> I'm only paying the bills that come out of this particular paycheck. However, I know that it's safe for me to start saving money now because I do have enough money to pay for all of my fixed expenses right now if I were to choose to do that. So what I have left over is my net income of 843.23. Again, whatever's left over after I earn enough for my every or my fixed expenses, my bills, this gets split off and it's only splitting in two different places because I don't have debt. So 50% of this number is going to stay in my checking account for my variable expenses. This stays in my checking account as well for my fixed expenses. And then this 50% goes towards my savings. Okay. So. That means that 42161 is going to stay in my checking and then I'm going to send 42162 to my savings. These two numbers add up to this, that plus that is my paycheck, okay? So all I'm going to do is put those numbers in and then I'm going to tell you guys how I'm going to split this off between those three accounts that I told you about earlier. So we have 42162 going to savings. Then what goes in the checking box is this amount right here plus this amount. Again, these are the two amounts I said have to stay in my checking, okay? So if I do 60414 plus 42161, that gives me 1000 $25.75. If I were to add this going across, that would get me the amount of my paycheck. Now, if you are looking to use my more simplified way, I can show you guys on a piece of paper, and this is probably what I'm gonna start doing since that video will stay up on my channel. If I were to do this the simplified way, I'm just gonna show you really quickly. And if you haven't watched the video, this might confuse you, but. So in my direct deposit account is the 1447.37, okay? This is account number one. Account number two. Account number three. Okay, so. This is for my everyday expenses. And these literally are different accounts. This is direct deposit. This is the savings account. And then this is what's gonna stay in this account until the next paycheck. <clears throat> and there's also another account, I'm sorry. And this is for bills. So, if I go back here, what I need in my account for my bills this particular month is two twelve forty nine. Okay, so that's what I would send to the bill account. What I would send to my everyday account for spending is four eighty two fifty. Okay, now 
because I tell you guys with this method not to save until the end of the month, we're just gonna X out this account because you'll see that at the end of the month. So if I take the 1447.37 minus the 482.50, also minus the 212.49, that means that I would still have 752.38 left in my direct deposit account. And it, this is the way that it would stay until the next time I get paid in two weeks. So I would use my debit card for this account for all of my variable expenses. And I know as that dwindles, that's all I have for that two week time span. My bills would come out on auto pay from this account. I don't have to worry about that. And then the direct deposit account would be what's left over and when I get paid again, it'll be added to that. So now that that's out the way, let's get back to this. So how I'm gonna split up this money for savings. I think I did, what did I do, half? Mm, I think it's half, 138066. Yeah, okay, so half of this, uh-oh, times 0.5. So 21081 is going to stay in my miscellaneous slash investment account. And then if I have that again, and I'm actually going to make this 82. So for 21.62, subtract 21.82. And I subtract it because what's left over needs to be divided in half because I send the same amount to these two accounts. So 21080. No, 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 no. What, am I tripping? I'm tripping, I'm sorry, y'all. So, okay. 421.62 minus the 210.82 I'm gonna send to miscellaneous slash investment account. I'm gonna divide that in half. So 105.40 is gonna go to my medical account and 105.40 is gonna go to the car. So let's go ahead and put that in and then I'm gonna set up my reconciliation for my checking account at the bottom of this page. So we have 210.82, then we have 105.40, 105.40. Again, the total is four, 2162 and what I have remaining from this check 752.38 minus 421.62 so I'll still have $330.76 left over if I spend every single dollar that I have written on this page. So let me set up my reconciliation down here. I like to reconcile my accounts at the end of every paycheck and then at the end of the month as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have projected and actual. And I like to do this because I also like to kind of see how close I am in regards to what my actual is versus what I projected or estimated. Because of course, when you're setting up your budgets, you are trying to project what you think is gonna happen with your money. So I like to compare what I thought was gonna happen versus what actually happened. So my beginning balance on my checking account is always $4,000 at the beginning of every budget. That's my buffer. I'm gonna add in the 1447.37 from my check. That gets me $5,447.37. I'm gonna subtract the fixed amount of 212.49, subtract the variable amount of 482.50, and then I'm also subtracting the savings of 421.62. And what I should have left over should be 43.30.76. So 54.47.37 minus 212.49 minus 482.50 minus 421.62 gets me 
4330076. And I knew that because if I take the beginning balance plus or minus whatever's left over at the end of the paycheck to paycheck budget, that gets me the ending balance. So that's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, of course, feel free to leave them down below. Please thumbs up this video, subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.